Guys, how are we doing today? We're going to be talking about two of the most popular tractors on the planet, the John Deere 1025R and the Kubota BX23S. So these two tractors are the latest and greatest models. These are what you're going to find if you're shopping for brand new tractors or in the used tractor market. So I want to show you today the differences between these two, the similarities, and then I'm going to tell you about what they both lack, what I think that they should have. I'm not a John Deere dealer and I'm not a Kubota dealer. I have no affiliation with either one of them. I do sell both of them because I really like both machines. I like both manufacturers. I think they provide really good value for customers. The best features that are out there overall, do I think either one of them are perfect? I don't. Would I take features from both and probably combine them together to make my own super tractor? Probably so. I want to give you that information, let you make the best informed decision you can. There's going to be pros and cons of either one. We'll go through it all today. If you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. Would love to have you join the family here. Leave a comment as well. Want to know what you think about each one of these tractors here. Which one would you buy? What features do you like? What features don't you care about? What features do you think that they should have on them? And as always, head on over to goodworkstractors.com. I can sell you a tractor. I can sell you an attachment. I can put together a package for you. I'd love to sell you one of these two right here. If they're not for sale now, check the website because there's probably others that are similar to it or coming soon. And don't forget I can help with delivery and financing as well. All right, here we go. I do want to say really quick here that this is going to be pretty heavy on the features of these tractors, what they have and what they don't have versus a lot of technical information. I'll give you a little bit of that so you have some major points that I think are valuable, but you know, this video has to be fun for me to make and, and if it's just all technical stuff, I'm going to fall asleep. So you're going to get the good stuff that these tractors have, the things that make me upset, you know, that they don't have on them and we're going to get into that kind of thing. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go through the similarities of these two tractors. And so the first one that I want to talk about is going to be the transmission. And so both of these machines here, on the John Deere here, you're going to have a high, a neutral, and a low. This is going to be your range for your hydrostatic transmission. There is not a power reverser or a gear drive transmission available with these machines. So on the John Deere here, high, neutral, and low. And then over on here, the Kubota is going to be set up the same way. You're going to have your turtle for, for low, neutral, and high with the rabbit there. So same setup, no other configurations available. It's going to be hydrostatic only, high and low range. So some of the other similarities that these two tractors are going to have in common and that you would expect out of top end. These are the top of the line in the subcompact world. They are very nice. You can't buy anything nicer. So the thing you're going to notice on both of these, you're going to have a very nice a plush, a thick pad on a suspension seat. Very good suspension seat underneath both of these here. They're going to have your armrests on here as well. You're also going to have a tilt steering wheel found on both of these machines as well as cruise control and a padded floorboard. Another option that is standard equipment on both of these models is going to be a mid-PTO to run a belly mower or to run a front mount snowblower. Okay, so really that's just about where the similarities end. And so it's a pretty short list there. And now what I wanna do, I wanna get you just some of those basic dimensions, some basic weight or lift capacities. That way we can get that out of the way. You're gonna to start to see some differences here. Then we're gonna get into what both of these machines lack. What do I wish that both of them had, at least as options, available options from the factory, if not standard equipment, things that drive me nuts. After that, I'm gonna to start to dissect the differences between the John Deere and the Kubota. That way you know what you're buying. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna talk about basic weight of the tractors themselves. We're not talking about the loaders or the backhoes or the mower decks. Basic weight of the tractors themselves. The John Deere is gonna weigh 1,444 pounds. The Kubota, over here, gonna weigh 1,521 pounds. That was a little bit surprising to me. Width of these two machines. What I took was the outside to outside dimension of the rear tires here. Neither one of these machines have wheel spacers on them, so it's a fair dimension there. The John Deere is going to be 47 inches wide, maybe just a hair over that. The Kubota is going to be about 44 and a half inches wide. Three-point lift is very similar. I got this information and I got most of this information off of Tractor Data, very good resource there. Not always reliable. Sometimes if you see a number on there that is totally uh, out of the blue or, or way different than what you thought. Maybe go to the manufacturer website and try to find that information on there. For some reason, Kubota, John Deere, they're not always going to have all the information in one spot. It's very frustrating. So anyway, Tractor Dad is pretty good about that. Uh, Three-point lift capacity on the John Deere 1025R, 681 pounds. On the Kubota, 680. Okay, again, off of Tractor Data, we're talking the 260V backhoe here. Digging depth, two foot bottom, going to be 74 inches. Over here on the Kubota, it's going to be 72 inches. So you can dig 72 inches down, six foot down, two foot flat bottom, 74 inches on the John Deere. Okay, and so now loader capacity. And this was a real world test conducted by our buddy Tractor Time with Tim. 
and it was done on a Kubota BX2680 and a John Deere 1025R. So the 2680 is gonna have essentially the same loader on here. It's actually gonna be the 344 model, not the 340 model, um, but it's gonna be very, very close to what the real world comparison is right here. It's still the subcompact and the uh, current generation of Kubota tractors, so it's relevant in that regard. So I'll post a link to his video because I think you should check it out as well. He's done a whole series comparing the John Deere to the Kubota. I'm doing this in one fell swoop. This is a one shot one here. So what I'm gonna give you is the amount that he simply got to lift off the ground. So it kind of lets you know what's the heaviest load you could simply pick up just enough to get it to move from point A to point B. And that's gonna be with the John Deere or with the Kubota. So with the John Deere 1025R, our buddy Mr. Marks was able to lift 1400 pounds off the ground, not way up here, just off the ground, enough to be able to drive it from point A to point B. He did the same test with the Kubota BX. He was able to lift 940 pounds, okay? Again, that's just enough to get it off the ground and move it from point A to point B. So you have 1,400 pounds over here, 940 pounds over here, off the ground, not way up here. All right, so I wanna tell you about things that both of these machines lack, things that I think should be available options for the premium, for the high end, you know, for the best that you can get in a series and a frame size. Come on, guys. I think these manufacturers need to step up their game. I'm not talking about things like lift capacity or lift height or weight or hydraulic system. I mean, to a certain extent, it's still a subcompact tractor, right? So you gotta stay within that footprint there. There's only so much you can realistically accomplish. So that's not what I wanna talk about. Hey, really quick guys, one of the things I wanna tell you about here are gonna be LED light bulbs, a super easy way to upgrade your tractor, get some nice, clean, bright white light. It makes the tractor look a lot better at night too. So whether you have the John Deere or the Kubota, it doesn't really matter. One of these two bulbs here is gonna work for you. It's gonna work for a lot of the John Deere and Kubota subcompacts and compact tractors, both current generations and previous. So make sure you check it out in the links below. Get them right from Amazon, shipped to your house. So really quick, I'm gonna show you the difference between the halogen and the LED light in this Kubota tractor. All right, so here's a good look. You can see you've got the halogen over here. You have the LED over here, all right? So nice, clean difference. That's all you need to do. It's super easy, it's plug and play. If you've ever changed the light bulb, it's a piece of cake, guys. Again, you're going to have links in the description below. So, halogen, LED. Okay, so really quick, the John Deere's require both bulbs here because guess what? You have an extra set of fender lights on the John Deere. So these are going to be the headlight bulbs that you can swap out. These right here are going to be the fender lights. Let me show you. You're going to have the halogens over there on that side and then the LEDs over here on this side. So, you know, again, it can be hard to tell this in the videos, but there's a pretty significant difference here in person in the uh, both the color of it you know the clarity of it it just kind of looks a little bit better too so it's a pretty nice cheap upgrade that you can do to your tractor again john deere kubota subcompact compact all the information is going to be in the description below an air ride seat should be an option for a tractor like this you know these have a weight capacity of around 250 pounds i think it is something like that you know ken's bolt-on hooks i think you can get some upgraded springs on there where you can increase that weight capacity but it's kind of ridiculous give us some more options here to upgrade the tractor seats. I think it would be a big hit for both these manufacturers. Don't get me wrong, these are nice seats that we have on here, but there should be another option there. If all the larger series or most of the larger series tractors can have those kinds of options, why not these guys? A drawbar should be standard equipment on a tractor, in my opinion, and that's not gonna be found on either one of these machines here. For the life of me, I don't know why. Maybe it's ground clearance. That's the only concern I can really think of, but you think there would be a way to integrate, incorporate a drawbar on there in a logical manner, some way that makes it more versatile. The fact that they don't have a drawbar on there kind of drives me nuts. Deluxe grill guards. Why is that not an option? If you can get it on the bigger tractors, why not on here? I mean, you sell just as many of these tractors, probably way more of them than all the larger series combined. So get a deluxe grill guard option on here. Yeah, I do see the Kubota one that's over here, and I like this actually quite a bit better. Never mind, I'm not giving my opinion. Let's just say that this has more coverage, it appears, on here versus this basic grill guard over here. I would just like to see a all-encompassing, you know, a lot more coverage on a grill guard option available. You know, on some of the larger tractors, like the 3046R that I had that had that uh, metal mesh cover that was on there, I got so many requests on where I got that from, and I got it from John Deere, you know, but I think that these guys should come out with something like that. Tool storage. I don't know why they don't give us more tool storage. It drives me nuts. No, not because we need to fix these tractors in the field, but we got things to do with our tractors out in the field. Sometimes you need easy places to store shovels, chainsaws, chain, whatever it might be. Just places to put things on your tractor. Is there a solution for that? 
Why, yes, there is a solution for that, the big tool rack. You got the big, big tool rack. This is the ultimate rack. You got a smaller rack as well. These things are amazing, man. You can put them on the back of your tractor. You got all sorts of ways to attach tools. You know, you have tool stores for shovels up here, chainsaws, hoses, chains. You can put weights in here. You can put logs in here. You can do whatever you want. You can roll it around your garage. You hook it right up to your three-point hitch here. You carry it around. It's quick hitch compatible. This thing holds all kinds of weight, as much weight as you can put in it just about. Sit on the tailgate here, 250 pounds. It's amazing, man. I'm telling you, if you need tool storage, get yourself a big tool rack. Save 5% with code GWT, or I can order you one right here, and you can pick it up from here and go home as well. One of the other things that drive me crazy about those smaller tractors are the fact that there's not a factory OEM, OEM cab with air conditioning and heat. I know John Deere has a Mauser cab, okay, that has heat in it, that it can be added from the factory if you buy it new with the tractor. That's not what I'm thinking. This right here, guys, this is an OEM cab, okay, a factory cab. It's, it's integrated with the tractor. You just can't take this thing off. And yeah, I know there's an installation process for the Mauser cab. This is night and day difference, man. Air conditioning, an HVAC system, okay? Air conditioning, heat, radio, all that stuff on there. You know, and Kubota has the Curtis cab that you can get. And then there is an AC pack, I believe, that you can add on now to get air conditioning and heat in there. But it's still an aftermarket solution. It's just not the same. I mean, these are premium tractors we're talking about here. They need to have options like that. Okay, so this right here is a Curtis cab on a John Deere 1025R. This is the type of cab I'm talking about that you can get on a John Deere 1 Series. It's going to be installed on, on top of the tractor itself, all right? Now, this is different from the Mauser cab, I understand. There's Tektite, there's Sims, there's a lot of different brands out there. But the point is, is that they're really all aftermarket cabs, all right? So they're going to have heat, options for heat at least in here. And you can add on a radio and wipers and all that kind of thing. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the wind out of here. But this is going to be the difference between a factory cab that we were showing you there and then an aftermarket cab here. Big time difference, but you don't really have another option on the smaller subcompact tractors. One of the other things that drives me nuts on a premium tractor is the fact that you have this archaic, very simplistic, not very user-friendly turnbuckle system here to adjust your lower sway arms. You know, on the larger tractors that you get, there's a very easy style where you can pull a pin out and just, it's telescoping. You know, you can slide it in and out and have complete adjustment to be able to attach and detach to your three-point hitch. That's just not found on these smaller tractors, whether it's John Deere, Kubota, or anybody else. So let me show you the system I'm talking about. So this is a system I'm telling you about right here where you can simply pull out this pin and this arm, it's attached to a quick hitch right now, but this whole arm would slide on top of the inner rod there completely. And you could put this pin through any of these different adjustment holes after you get your attachment hooked up to your three-point hitch, and it'll just go right back in there and into place. Why this system is not available on those subcompact tractors, the premium subcompacts, drives me nuts. Okay, now it's time to get into some differences between these two machines. There's going to be certain things that one of them has, the other doesn't, and vice versa. And so let's talk about that. All right, so we're gonna kind of start up front and then work our way towards the middle and then to the back of the tractors here. So what you're gonna see up front here is on the Kubota. This is their bucket level indicator. And so it's a sticker that's on the top of the bucket. And essentially, you kind of eyeball it from the operator's seat. And when you think that this is level, it's gonna indicate that the bottom of the bucket is level with the ground as well. So over here on the John Deere, you're gonna see their style of bucket level indicator, which is gonna be this long rod that you see going all the way down here. And so from the operator station, what you're gonna look at is where this bends. You can see how it's bent right here when it goes through this bracket. And so when that bend is right in the bracket here, that's how you're gonna know that the bottom of your bucket is level with the ground. And you can adjust that for different attachments. You can loosen this nut right here and adjust that rod in or out. So if you have pallet forks or a snow pusher and they all have different levels, of uh, levelness with the ground, you'll know that. And another way to do that is you can actually, and I was told this by a viewer, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to get your name or your handle at least, but he put pieces of red tape or black tape or different colors of tape somewhere along this position here so that he didn't have to worry about adjusting that. So if he had different attachments that were on the end of his loader, he just had a different color of tape for those different attachments that indicated when they were level with the ground. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about the famous steel versus plastic, okay? And I don't really care either way, whichever way you go. But the Kubota is going to have a steel hood, steel fender, steel hood, that kind of thing. And this is a steel hood right here. You know, there's pros and cons to each, but this is what they're going to rock with. There was a certain generation of Kubotas that did have the plastic or the polymer hoods, and then they uh, reverted back to the, the steel. So that's what you're going to see on here. 
is a steel painted hood and fenders as well. So over here on the John Deere, you're gonna see that they're rocking a polymer hood and fenders as well. So where it counts, you know, on the, uh, on the loader arms here and on the mower deck and obviously the, the frame of the tractor itself is still gonna be steel, but they're using a polymer composite that's on here, again, on the fenders and on the hood. So while I'm telling you guys this, I realized I didn't tell you how many hours were on the tractors. And so this tractor here has around 140 hours on it. And the Kubota that's, uh, that we're comparing this to has about 185 hours. So they're both under 200 hours. This John Deere is a 2018. The Kubota is a 2017. But just want to be up front with the hours there. You know, these are both used for residential applications. Beyond that, I don't really know the detail in and out of what they were used for. But just gives you a little bit of background. That way, if you're just kind of looking at them condition-wise and that kind of thing, you have a little bit more information to go on. Next thing we're going to talk about is the hoods. You know, how they open, what's underneath them, the configuration of everything underneath the hood. And so the John Deere hood, it's really hard to see here, but you got to use a key or a screwdriver, or something along those lines. And there's just a little spot right there. You just push a key in there and it's going to open the hood latch. It's just a safety thing that they carried over from uh, Europe. And so that's how their hood is going to open. And you can see that when you do open it, it's good access to the top. However, these side panels are still in place here. Now these side panels do have these yellow little yellow push pins right here that you can turn in and then it's a toolless removal to take the side panels off so it's it's pretty easy to get really good access to the to the engine compartment on there of course you'd get better access if you took the loader off as well but i'm not going to go through that process right now so the kubota hood is actually going to open from the back and it's going to open forward this way and you can see this little black handle right here typically what i do is just push down a little bit on there and then you can pull out and it's going to release it and you do have to pop open the grill guard there, very easy to do. And then you can open up the hood. Okay, so here's a look inside the John Deere engine compartment. You can see that the battery is located up front with your lights right here. So, you know, decent access for the battery down there. It is kind of a pain in the butt. So fortunately, you don't have to really mess with your battery a whole lot. Radiator here, and then you do have your air filter in the back and exhaust system. And of course, the engine block down underneath there. Um, but pretty well organized. It's not too crammed in here. It's, it's, it's fairly wide open, at least from what, uh, what I feel like and what I see a lot of different tractors. So really quick here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this back cover off because there's something that's hidden underneath here that you might want to see. And that is going to be the battery. Okay, so it's the battery compartment for the Kubota is in a really nice location, I think, or, uh, right back here. Pretty easy to get to and uh, service it if you need to. Again, batteries, fortunately, don't have to be dealt with all the time, but nice location there. I'll go ahead and put this back on in a minute. And if we take a look here inside the engine compartment, you can see you do have pretty good access. Again, if you imagine that the loader is off of the tractor, you're gonna have really good access to the side here. No other panels. It's just a, all of a one piece hood here that you could access to. You know, it is kind of hard to reach way down in there, I suppose, and, and you could always just take the hood completely off. Um, but this is a good look at it, and, and this is what you're dealing with here. And I do apologize, it is a little bit dusty. I haven't got to clean the engine compartment on this one yet. So as you can see, everything's pretty much centrally located here. It's pretty much accessible from any point of where you're standing around the machine, but uh, pretty good access, I think, in my opinion. So something to be aware of is going to be the attachment style of the bucket to the loader. And so I want you to know that on the base model of the Kubota BX is going to be a pinned on bucket. So you're not going to see these two levers here, the skid steer quick attach. It's going to be pinned to the loader itself, meaning it's not going to be quickly removable. So you can't put forks on, you can't put a grapple on, you can't put a plow blade or a snow pusher on very quickly. So you want to make sure that you look for one if it's new or used that has these two levers here that indicates you can get the skid steer quick attach uh, option that you that it has the skid steer quick attach option on it so you can quickly transition back and forth between those attachments. So this is going to be the style that is on the BX is going to be the skid steer quick attach what you see on a lot of construction equipment and larger tractors and other manufacturers as well. So of course John Deere has their own system and this is going to be the, called the John Deere quick attach. It's kind of referred to as the hook and pin system down underneath there. But this is uh, what you're going to see over here. It's just a different style. Now the base version of this includes the John Deere quick attach. So there's not a pinned in or a pinned on version of the bucket to the loader system here. So you're always going to have that versatility of quick attach with the forks, pusher, grapple, whatever it might be. Now let's talk about the mower decks. And so I am actually really happy that I have this one in here that has an option that hasn't been seen very often or is not very popular on Kubota BX tractors. And it's not even popular with dealers. And so maybe there are some long-term ramifications to 
um, kind of the negative perception of it. I don't know, but I did a whole video on this system here, which is called the Easy Over Mower Deck. It means that you can drive over it, and it actually also has a version of a, a quick coupler for the PTO shaft, so you don't have to get underneath there and monkey around with uh, connecting and disconnecting the PTO shaft to the mid-PTO. However, the base configuration of the mower deck for the Kubota is going to be one that you have to pull out from the side, so you can't drive over it, and then you also have to get underneath there and monkey around with that mid-PTO shaft, connecting it and disconnecting it. And so um, that can be a challenging system, you know, but this is, it's nice to know that this system is available. And, you know, when I did it for the first time, I thought it went pretty smooth. And so I'll, I'll post a link to the video so you can see what it is, but I really like it. If I were going to buy one of these, I would consider getting the easy over system. Now these mower decks, I believe are available in 54 and 60 inches. Now don't hold me to it, but I think you can get a 48 version on the smallest of the BX models. What is it? The BX 1880 or something along those lines. I don't think that's available on the larger ones, but again, I could be wrong. So over here on the John Deere, you're going to find that you have a drive over deck as standard equipment. You can't get a deck that is not drive over. So what you can get as an option though, is going to be at least the way I interpret auto connect as the coupler, the uh, PTO shaft mechanism. You can either have a manual PTO shaft where you have to get underneath here and again, monkey around with it, or you can have the true auto connect, which is going to be the female and male sides that mate as you drive over the deck. It's just going to connect itself. You don't have to worry about moving any levers, doing anything else. It's a pretty sweet system. Again, I've done a video on this and I'll post a link to that as well. And so mower decks for the 1025R are going to be available in 54 and 60 inch widths. Really quick here, let's take a look at the coupler system here. This is going to be for the loader. And if you had the loader off, this is where you would plug in to run a, a front mounted a snow plow or a snow blower, that kind of thing. And so there's four hydraulic quick connects here that are pretty easy to do. just Pioneer Ag style couplers. They're pretty easy to take on and off. And, and again, I've done videos on how to uh, attach and detach these if you need to. I've done videos on how to take these loaders on and off. So make sure you check out my channel. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button too. So this is standard equipment here on the John Deere's and now I'm going to show you a very cool feature over on the Kubota. Okay, so now what you can see kind of tucked way back in here is actually a very cool contraption. Now on the John Deere, you had four individual connections there that you would have to connect and disconnect if you want to take the loader off. This lever right here, once the loader is actually off the tractor and standing there on its own, you can actually flip this lever all the way up and disconnect all four of those hoses at the same time. Pretty sweet feature, and this is standard equipment on the BX23S. You know, now again, I've done videos on these loaders, how you can take them on and off. They are both really good systems as far as the convenience and the operation and how you do it. So make sure you check those videos out. Just know that you have a true quick park loader, whether you're getting the Kubota or the John Deere. Okay, so now I want to tell you about the pedal configuration for the hydrostatic transmission. And so they're definitely going to be set up in two completely different fashions. And if you take a look down here at Kubota's setup, it's going to be called a treadle pedal. And so you're going to have a forward pedal and a reverse pedal, which are going to be controlled essentially by your toe pushing up here or your heel pushing back here. Some folks are going to actually put their toe underneath here and push back on it this way because there is plenty of room underneath here. So you've got some different ways to operate it there, and it's just something to be aware of. So over here on the John Deere, what you're going to see is you're going to have a side-by-side -side pedal configuration. And so you're simply going to have one pedal clearly marked with a forward arrow, and then next to it, another pedal marked with a backwards arrow. So simply push that one to go forward and this one to go reverse. You're using your toes with both operations. You will see there's a little bit more floorboard space that's open here that's not taken up by a pedal back in that area there. Um, one of the things that I thought was nice on the Kubota, but again, this is not, um, you know, I'm trying not to be influential here at all, but you'll just see there's a little bit more of a hump here that might not be visible in the video, whereas the Kubota deck is perhaps a little bit more flat. Not, not significant, but just perhaps a little bit. Okay, so now let's talk about backhoes here. And now we talked earlier that both of them are gonna have a really similar digging depth, you know, 74 inches to 72 inches, so not much of a difference there. However, what you are gonna see is the fact that the John Deere over here has a separate seat, clearly two seats on the machine. The Kubota is going to have one seat, and when John Deere redesigned this 1025R model in 2018, um, they went from a one seat design like what the Kubota has right there where you would take that seat and swivel it around and then you would operate the backhoe. That's what John Deere used to have, and then they switched it over to the separate seat here that you're going to see now. So beyond that, a couple of the features that these backhoes do have in common are going to be the fact that 
you're going to see that both of these have provisions on them for a thumb. And this one, in fact, has that optional thumb on there, which you can see right here. So what you can see over here on the John Deere is that there are provisions for a thumb here as well. This particular unit doesn't have that optional thumb, but it's nice to know that the option is there. You know, so really these backhoes are going to be pretty similar. You know, there's an improvement in the attachment style or detachment style of how you take this backhoe on and off on the Kubota. And I think Messix did a really good job with that video, and so I don't want to hash into that too much. But if you look at uh, the video for, what is this model here, the Kubota BT603 backhoe removal, you're going to see that video from Messix. Again, he did a really good job, and it's a nice, it's a pretty nifty system that they have there. Uh, John Deere system hasn't really changed a whole lot over the years. When they did redesign the backhoe, they reconfigured a few things and put some um, restrainers on the, the stabilizer arms to keep them from falling down because hydraulics will drift over time when these tractors are turned off. And they also relocated some hydraulic hoses that should have been done a long time ago. So they kind of brought some things up to par with the Kubota, in my opinion, um, just as far as features that they have on there to make them more level out the playing field perhaps. But these backhoes are going to essentially do the same thing for you. And really the biggest difference that I see here is there's one seat here versus two seats over here. You know, again, digging depths, hydraulic thumbs are very similar. Um, you may get some individuals that prefer the hydraulic response of one system over another. That's gonna be up to the operator and, and, and really hard for uh, it to show through in a video. All right, guys, well, you know, I hope you found that informative. I, again, don't really wanna give you my opinion too much in this. They're both good tractors. I wouldn't carry them if I didn't like them. And you know what? You get yourself in a John Deere, you get yourself in a Kubota. I think you're on the right track there. They both have a lot of great features. I'd probably cherry pick some things from either one of them, put them again in that super tractor there, but that's just not possible. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that subscribe button below. Would love to have you follow along. Leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Make sure you check out my other videos as well. I put a lot of comparisons out there. Individual tractor reviews, lots of stuff about attachments and great things for your tractor. As always, head on over to goodworkstractors.com. I can help you with a tractor, can help you with an attachment, put together a whole package for you, help you with delivery and financing too. So until next time, take care. We'll see you in the next one.